Bodierski here. How are you doing? I hope you had a great week. It is time to get serious in this video. You know, you can tell I have a bun. You know what buns mean. They mean business. You know, I offer a lot of videos on spreads and tarot and creativity. Sometimes my herbalism, sometimes things I make that are witchy, shadow work, spooky things. It's sort of just all the things I do and may not seem really focused, but they are connected. You know, I kind of talk about my decks all the time and it's not because I'm self-centered. No, it isn't actually because I want to sell my decks either. It's, um, you know, it helps, but that is not my primary reason for making YouTube videos. I just want to share a little bit about my process. And the reason I always talk about my deck is because it works with talking about creativity because I created it and it's about writing and about art. And those are some pretty big topics in creativity. But there's another reason. Are you ready? That reason is because I am avoiding what a lot of people seem to do. <laughs> and that is talk about decks, lots of decks, their favorite deck, the best deck, the worst deck, decks that didn't quite make it. You know, it just doesn't sit right with me because, well, I'm part of that community and uh, there are a lot of decks from people I care about deeply that I don't really like. And there are other decks that uh, I really like, but the creators um, will stop the sentence there. So it leaves me in a bit of a bind. It's kind of like why I don't watch Woody Allen films anymore. It's a little bit of um, uh, cognitive dissonance happening there. So... This is why I use my deck. Now, having said that, somebody sent me an email uh, asking about, of course, what decks uh, I like and which ones I don't, but also, could I just talk about decks that, um, the kinds of decks I like and the kinds that I don't. So I figured that was a bit of a safe space, you know, good compromise. And so here we go. I have five points uh, for, well, reasons why I won't use a deck when I'm reading for myself or clients. Because yes, I actually do use other decks other than my own. Um, and when I do use my own, this is totally 100% sincere. I use it because it's easier to read for me because I made it, not because it's so freaking brilliant. Okay. So, five reasons I won't use a deck, or types of decks I might not use. Number one, completely abstract decks. No, I'm not going to dish with examples. Stop that. <laughs> Just decks whose artwork is so abstracted, you could read anything into it. You could just... You know, I appreciate process, and I have had gallery shows. I understand that it's coming from within and can be intensely personal, but that is my point. Sometimes abstraction can be so intensely personal, it's difficult to read. Now, maybe that is other people's taste because um, they just want to read anything into it, or they read so completely intuitively, it suits them, the colors, the form, the whole bit. Fair enough. I I can't read with text like that because I am a trained tarot reader as well as using my intuition. Okay, so number two, decks that have a lack of diversity somewhere in there. And you know, the interesting thing there is, you, you know, 
also diversity that is forced because sometimes that is worse. And I'll tell you why. Because they're often created by well-meaning white people who uh, just kind of put in people of color or people with different abilities and, uh, you know, uh, listen, I'm, I'm really big on inclusivity and diversity, but if you are not stopping to think about whose story you're telling, the context and where you're putting this person, because tarot cards can be very arbitrary. You know, if you're saying uh, this person is the queen and then you're using, say, an image of a well-known person of color, you know, you're still kind of putting them in a very tiny slot. And while I know a lot of people will say, well, at least they're trying and it's better than looking at all you lily white folk in your lily white damn dicks. Okay, I get it. But for me... I can feel when that is not ringing true. And by the same token, listen, I am not going to use decks that are what I would consider very narrow-minded and haven't changed since 1910. Now, they're not for me either. You know, if you're not showing gender flexibility and some forms of uh, different abilities or diversity, I, you know, I, I wouldn't care for that either. So pretty non-committal somewhere in the middle okay but that really does bother me when people are telling marginalized people's stories uh thoughtlessly and those aren't their stories to tell okay all right number three what is number three just poorly designed decks and by what is poorly designed well you know uh, from my perspective and the perspective of a designer, I would say you can just tell one is poorly designed. And I don't mean necessarily poorly drawn. I mean, there's been no thought whatsoever uh, put into uh, typefaces or color schemes or composition, you know, how all the cards function together yet individually a uh, continuity of a style you know that kind of thing for design and uh as far as skill in in drawing well you know i am way too biased here and a lot of people will not be this judgy i was teaching people how to draw and design for a long time my thinking is this your style is your style and I've never criticized anyone's style. I love everybody's style, and that's the truth. I think what I'm talking about <laughs> that makes me a little edgy, and, and people who know me <laughs> or who've ever been in my classes know this, the really large head, short limb syndrome, I don't know how to draw hands or feet, mitten things, do tend to make me tense because you know they are newbie issues and someone hasn't taken the time to learn the rules well enough to then break them okay so you can tell you can tell the difference between somebody who draws people with large heads short limbs and mittens on purpose and the i'm really hitting you know trying to make it look accurate and anatomically correct here and in proportion and you're going oh I find that distracting. I'm not I'm not picking on people. I just couldn't use the deck because you know, I find, I'd be just looking at it going hey, it's just too distracting for me. And and that is a very personal thing lots of people would never notice, right? Or care. And again, that's not a style thing. You know, diversity in style. Oh, excellent. We need lots of different tastes in the tarot world and i'm so glad things are moving that direction generally speaking okay number four this one happens fairly frequently and it is not a unique dislike to me i think most people find it really reprehensible and that is outright fakes forgeries 
bad reproductions from um, crooks, there's no other way to say it, who will take a deck and they just run photocopies and mass produce and sell them for cheaper and nobody sees any royalties from these and uh, they're really poorly done reproductions. They're just, they're awful. You're, get, you're getting a really terrible copy. So be careful. There's so many forgeries out there and, uh, or just bad reproductions, I guess, would be more accurate. Just don't support these people. If you don't know the publisher, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a used deck, uh, but if you don't know who the publisher is or who the distributor is, or you've never heard of them and it's cheaper and it's from a place you're going, really? You know, why are you having just one-off decks and you can tell that it's got nothing to do with the original author or artist. And often it's contemporary decks. It's not like anyone's waited for copyright to lapse and just reprinted something. Uh, so be careful with those. That does bother me too. Okay, number five. Pet peeve. Complaining time. <laughs> People who copy trends. So I can't I said I wouldn't mention any decks, but let's just say your deck uh, was um, called the Wild Something. <laughs> and suddenly there's a million decks that look the same after it's become a hit, okay? After it's become a bestseller, after, you know, everyone says they love it. Suddenly there are a bunch of people by the dozens using either the title or the theme and just churning them out like at a, a, an insane rate. And when you look at them, they fall flat because they're inauthentic. They're not in the person's own voice. It's somebody trying to get validation and ride basically on the coattails of someone else who worked very hard to be original. And I'm not saying anyone's ever done that with my black and white ink drawings, but it's irritating. And it's not irritating because, uh, you know, you're the only one who does a certain style or that other deck creator is the only one who's ever thought of it. That's not it at all. It's just the lazy, quick way to do things. And I don't have a lot of respect for people who do the lazy quick thing. I have respect for people who reach deep inside and create something that I go, what the heck is that? <laughs> Where did that come from? Whether or not it's particularly my taste, that kind of originality, I just really love it. And um, there you have it. Those were five things that would keep me from reading a particular deck. So let me know what kinds of decks you like. <laughs> You don't have to mention my deck, please. What kinds of decks don't you like? What kinds of decks, and I, I don't mean that you should list decks here. I don't want to pan anybody. But what styles or things really bother you about some decks? You know, I could have gone on and on and on. I could have talked about the packaging. I could have talked about all sorts of things. But that kind of falls into design. So let me know. Thank you so much for watching this video fun and all, serious chat. Have yourselves a wonderful day, a great week, and remember, this time I didn't forget. It's just my thing. I meant to do that. Don't forget to subscribe. Okay, everyone. Bye-bye.